Well, I, Frank, I can't imagine that it's already 20 years ago. To be precise, it was 20 years, 21 years ago. I came in in 1991 for the first time. It was a few months after the opening with Toy Moi in Vietnam. Vietnam became a very attractive destination for managers from all around the world. They considered this as a new potential big market and the managers they queued up, of course, uh, in front of all the ministries. I came to Hanoi. Hanoi, of course, was a very quiet city at the time. Busy, but only uh, with bikes in the streets. Uh, at six o'clock in the evening, everything was closed down. Uh, no hotels, no infrastructure. And I went to the Ministry of Propaganda, of course, that queue was not so long as for in front of the other ministries. And I mean, they looked at me like an exotic animal. And they said, what do you want to do here? I said, I want to do publishing. They said, forget about this. Publishing, that's impossible. Publishing, that's uh, the monopole of, for the Communist Party. So that's a propaganda tool. So we don't want to have any foreigners involved here. But uh, if you are anyhow here, look at uh, the Vietnamese handicraft. We do so nice things here. Why not to import Vietnamese handicraft to Europe? So I went back home. I considered this as a little challenge, of course. Uh, and one year later, uh, we started our first corporation publishing in Vietnam. It's 1991, and following the Doi Moi reforms put in place by the government, a select team of Rinye's top brass has come to Vietnam to explore the possibilities of doing business in the newly opened economy. The Swiss Hotel, now called the Melody, was used by Swiss dignitaries and citizens as a base in Hanoi. It was a humble one-and-a-half-star affair, and was second in luxury only to the Army Hotel, where Michael Rinye also had the pleasure of staying. Vietnam had been largely isolated for a good 16 years, so what they found was an interesting business landscape, to say the least. Many bureaucratic hurdles had to be negotiated, but in the end, it was all worth it. In 1992, the first Western format weekly finance newspaper, Cash, or Thời Bao Kinh Tế Việt Nam in Vietnamese, is released. Following its success, Three other titles have been published in cooperation with the Vietnam Association of Economists. The Vietnam Economic Times, The Guide, and Tu Vong Tu Yong magazines. When I started with Ringe, I don't have the pictures of how Ringe uh, will go in Vietnam and how far and how many titles. And both Ringe and, and myself, we learned how to deal with the Vietnamese partner, how to deal with the authorities here, and how to deal with the business here. And we both learn. We all learn, even the partner. Because the Vietnamese media industry at that time, actually there's no, no industry. So we, we, we take it as an experiment. That is the government they often call, but we also take it like that. But of course, we, the more we go, the more we see, the road is more open, and the more we see opportunities that we can create something. A business cooperation contract was signed between Mr. Kak, an old man full of political legend and ideological intrigue, and a longtime editor in chief of Thai Bao Kinh Tế Việt Nam, and Thomas Trube, a Swiss entrepreneur and journalist who remains fully dedicated to Vietnam until today. Then, thanks to the Vietnamese ambassador in Switzerland, I then uh, found this contact with Mr. Kat and his colleagues, and uh, they were then able, let me say, to get a special permit from the prime minister at the time, and he signed then this document and uh, considered this cooperation as an experiment for the Vietnamese market. Thai Chang Jie was published, becoming the first full-color fashion magazine for Vietnamese women. It quickly went from a monthly to a bi-monthly, then three times a month before finally becoming a weekly magazine. The headquarters were moved from Hanoi to Ho Chi Minh City in 1999, where Mr. Tan remains as editor-in-chief. So, 
20 years later, what are you proud about uh, working with Ring Yang? Tôi nghĩ là sau 20 năm làm việc với Ring Yang thì tôi có rất nhiều câu chuyện nhưng trong đó cái điều mà tôi đáng tôi muốn nói nhất đây chính là cái thành công của Ring Yang ở Việt Nam và với tư cách là một cái công ty toàn cầu thì sự có mặt của Ring Yang 20 năm trước đã thực sự thể hiện cái tầm nhìn chiến lược của của Ring Yang đối với công việc phát triển cái công ty của mình. Thế và đối với tôi thì tôi nghĩ rằng 20 năm làm việc với các bạn Ring Yang thì tôi cũng cho rằng là đây là những cái người bạn thực sự thực sự chuyên nghiệp phải nói là đã làm việc với lại chúng tôi với tất cả những cái tình cảm tốt nhất cũng như là cái sự chân tình nhất mà các cái đối tác có thể dành cho nhau. Một câu chuyện nữa mà tôi muốn nói rằng là thông qua Ring Yang thì tôi hiểu về đất nước thì chúng ta con người và đó là những cái con người hết sức thân thiện và đất nước rất đẹp và tôi tin rằng cái sự phát triển của chúng ta trong những cái năm tiếp theo sẽ rất tốt. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Chào mừng anh. Ok, good. In 1997, the representative office of Ringye AG was set up in Hanoi to support and supervise Ringye businesses in Vietnam. This office was headed by Alain Genet, Jean-Pierre Riglet, Peter Achten, and finally, Sen Hoa. Well, actually, <clears throat> I can say that I'm like a the veteran of Ringe. The veteran here can be mean can mean that uh, you have some wounded injury during your 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 work with Ringe. But uh, up to now, I, I consider Ringe like a part of my family, and the way Ringe think uh, with their um, employees also try to build up Ringe as a family, and everyone is a uh, member. In 1999, a first joint venture in pre-press and designing services, Ringye Thom Yat, was set up with Daniel Keller as general manager and later Tai Hua. The joint venture was wound down two years later. In 2000, a new Ringye joint venture was set up and named AdNet Limited, providing a wide range of services in advertising sales, marketing, PR, contract publishing, and media consulting. This significant landmark gave Ringye the independent status needed to do business with local partners, other than just Thai Bai Khun Tay Việt Nam and Thai Chang Jie. Sen Hua became general manager at this point. In 2005, AdNet Limited, in partnership with the trade and industry newspaper, published the cooking magazine, Bep Yadan, using the format of Betty Bossy. In December 2008, Ringye Vietnam was established in Ho Chi Minh City to replace AdNet Limited. A handover of all businesses from AdNet Limited to Ringye Vietnam was made during 2009 and throughout 2010. In May 2010, Ringye Vietnam joined forces with Nhat Viet Group to publish a monthly real estate magazine, Mua Ba Nhat Đất, which remains the biggest real estate website up until today. In October 2010, Hot on the heels of a licensing contract signed with Lagardère and a publishing contract signed with the Hanoi Women Entrepreneurs Association, L, the world's leading fashion magazine, was launched in Vietnam under the name of Fidep, L, becoming the first foreign title licensed to Ringye in Vietnam. Women's Health, the second foreign title licensed to Ringye Vietnam, published its first edition in December 2011 in cooperation with the Women's Publishing House. It's not too exaggerated to talk, uh, to say that Ringe has created the media industry here, but with this uh, new atmosphere, new fresh idea coming from Ringe for the new product, for the new ideas, of the supplement, of the, uh, of the new uh, product extension from the main product, that also makes the other publisher in Vietnam think of uh, how they can cope with this. Ringye Studios. In 2011, Ringye Studios was set up as the very first app production studio of Ringye AG. From a core group of just a handful of people, it has expanded into a vibrant team of around 40 and boasts a client base spanning from Switzerland to Vietnam and China. 
with Stéphane Carpentier as creative director and general manager. To extend its readership to the online community, Ringier Vietnam has also developed a women's portal that serves several women's interest sites like MaryWedding.com, MaryHome.com, MaryBaby.com, and will eventually include Women'sHealthVietnam.com and LVN.com. In 2012, Ringier Vietnam took a big leap into the future with plans to make its print media businesses available via multiple platforms and to meet the challenge of the new media landscape head on. It's a small operation, uh, but we are still here because whether it's Michael Ring or myself, we simply love this country. And uh, this is why we have diversified somehow our activities in Vietnam. As you know, we do not only publishing, we have a big foundation being active. We have Ring Studios, we have not yet a software development company. So we have diversified a little bit our activities to make sure that we are still here in 20 years from now. Ring A should be very proud of the print success it had 20 years ago in Vietnam. But it's the comprehensive digital strategy that we're starting to develop now that it, I think will carry us even more strongly into the future. Uh, besides L, Women's Health, and Toy Tan Tre all having websites and tablet editions, we now have brands like Mary and Bepidin and Mobile Nadat that generate a majority of their content through the communities that they have created. I'm really excited about working with our editors, working with our clients, and working with our readers to make brands that are number one in their categories and make, ring, make sure that Ring Ye remains number one in this market. Congratulations to Ring Ye on 20 years in Vietnam. It's been good for our businesses and also a very good friendship. Me too. I think the same. As of today, Rinjian, to me, like a 20 year old boy. My personal uh, approach to Vietnam, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it.